Jack. Now, I remember back in the day, I was on my way to Mandon. That's what they used to call London before those suffragettes showed up and forced them to change the name because it was a woman city too. Now, I tell you, Mandon was a great name. The city was named by my old pal, Charles Mandon, and that was before the war. Back in those days, names were too expensive. So only a few people in select cities had them. A name for 10 shillings, they used to say. Although back in those times, shillings had to be replaced with cardboard cutouts with the letter S written on them, as there was a metal shortage due to the impending war. We used to spend our school time cutting out fake cardboard shillings to throw into the river to see how many poor people would jump in after them. <laughs> uh, anyway, I was on my way to Mandon, or London as it's now called. I needed a new pair of earmuffs for the winter. Back in those days, winter used to be the scariest time of all. Only the strong would survive. Other than those who, who were grim enough to live inside a corpse of someone who fell to winter's foul blade first. Although, if you didn't fall first, it would likely be a tough fit. I remember the first winter I spent inside a corpse. It was the corpse of my good friend, Thomas Edison, who had recently invented the garn dinger. We always used to say how much we wanted to ding our own garns, and good old Tommy cracked it. I got a garn dinger for Christmas that year, which honestly upset me, as I was trying hard to not think about the fact that I was inside my best friend. Because, well, you know. Anyway, the only good earmuffs were in Mandon. I took the layman's carriage to Mandon and made sure I had my plastic gloves on. Plastic was all the rage back then, and people were just dying to throw it in the ocean. We could barely wait. Anyway, the fashion was to wear plastic, and so I put on my plastic gloves. I did this as I took a layman's carriage to Mandon, which is what we used to call London back in the day before America copyrighted that name. The worst part is, they didn't even call it Mandon in America anymore. It's now Walmart, but apparently we still can't have the name because it would violate their precious freedom. Anyway, I was wearing my plastic gloves, which I bought at the low, low price of a tuppence at my local glove dealer. Tuppence a pair, tuppence a pair, he would say every morning. If I heard it as I woke up, I knew I was late for work. Back then, the only jobs they had were for people who mopped the rain in competitive cannibalism. And I was one of the best. Rain moppers, that is. They used to call me Magic Mop Man. And they even made a movie based on my exploits as a rain mopper called Singing in the Rain. Unfortunately, I never even saw a happening. And I was forced to continue mopping rain. But not this winter. I was taking the layman's carriage to Mandon, which is what they called London back in the day before the letter L was invented, which revolutionized the world as you could now tell the difference between layman and amen. Anyway, I was on my way to get earmuffs because my neighbor had recently started a band and they were playing very loud. It kind of sounded like they were just improvising half the time, but I guess I just didn't really like their music. Even still, I let them practice without complaint, as I was planning on getting earmuffs so I couldn't hear them. In order to get earmuffs, you had to go all the way to Mandon, which is what they called London before they called it London. The only place you could get good earmuffs in Mandon was the Muffery. The Muffery was, of course, at the forefront of the Industrial Revolution, using machines to produce things faster than ever before. This meant that muff makers were quickly made obsolete. And you know what happened after that. That's right, the muff strike of 48. It wasn't very effective, mind you, since they did it during the winter, and most of them died of pneumonia and polio in the cold. <clears throat> yeah, back in those days, you'd be lucky if staying out in the cold only gave you polio. But nowadays, kids complain about their colds. Of course, it wouldn't have even mattered if the muffery wasn't pumping out all that smoke which blocked out the sun, causing there to be two winters. Double winter, we used to call it. Of course, there was only a single winter back when I was off to Mandon to get some muffs. Back in those days, earmuffs only came in two colours, grey and black, as most things were monochrome before those dang televisions learned the secret of the light spectrum. But the important thing is that I was wearing my plastic gloves, which were also grey. So I was on my way to Mandon, in the layman's carriage with my grey plastic gloves on. I was on my way to get some earmuffs so I could block out the sound of my wife, who was complaining that I was spending too much money. She didn't know I was investing in that asbestos stuff. That's the future for sure. Anyways, the important part is I was wearing my gloves, which were made of plastic at is the time. Is this going anywhere? Do you mind? So Sorry. What do you mean by that? Where?
Jack. How did you get in there? It doesn't matter how I'm in here. Your work isn't done yet. Remember to like and subscribe. I'll be back. <laughs>